What do you think about the um, uh, incobotulinum toxin type A trials for Silurea that led to its regulatory approval? Uh, they were done overseas, so they didn't involve any U.S. physicians. Um, they used a relatively low dose. I think uh, the recommendation is 100 units uh, altogether. Um, they didn't report a lot of side effects, uh, which is a little bit suspicious. Um, so, and I don't have a lot of experience with it. So uh, for reasons of cost, I've used uh, uh, mostly Dysport uh, as my type A go-to if I cannot use a type B. I usually start with type B uh, with the thought of maybe this is more sensitive to muscarinic receptors, but again, I don't have any proof to show you this, and there are no head-to-head -head comparative trials that tell us which type of toxin is superior, a B or an A, mm -hmm. but I usually start with B, and if uh, someone uh, becomes resistant to B, I'll then move to a type A, which is generally dysport. You know, your situation is different. You're, I'm in Michigan, you're in Florida, the uh, insurance environment is different, so what do you do in your clinic? Well, we use air conditioning, <laughs> not heat, um, but we um, have relied on, in, in Florida, the drugs that are covered by Medicare. And in Florida, the Medicare coverage policy only covers the two on-label FDA-approved toxins, uh, myoblock and zeaman. Um, and we tend to use the type B first because that's what was, we've been using. And now with the uh, uh, zeaman getting the indication, I think that would be my type A of choice. Uh, so I would, I would use those two, I think, um, overall. Uh, the cost, I think, in, in Florida, for, for our purposes, is about the same. Those Zeeman trials uh, that, that occurred over in Europe, and, and, and they demonstrated efficacy over placebo, and, and they had a safety and tolerability. So I think it's helpful to, to see that package, to know that injecting the salivary glands uh, has efficacy and is safe. So I think that's helpful. And I think with uh, and looking at the A's, having that one having an indication, I think is helpful, and I, I tend to use that one. Um, as far as type B, we only have one type B. Right. And I think we've always been struck by the dry mouth that occurs uh, with cervical dystonia or other injections of, of myoblock and wondered whether it had greater affinity for the muscarinic receptors. So uh, the recent uh, approval of myoblock based on the pivotal trials that showed efficacy and safety and tolerability, I think is very uh, important information that we can incorporate into our decision making to choose toxins to inject. Have you um, had much experience using myoblock for salaria? Well, I started using myoblock um, maybe 12 years ago uh, when it was still off-label. And uh, my experience has grown over the years. And I think most of my patients still are on myoblock. I've had a few that have become uh, immunoresistant, uh, developed secondary resistance and don't respond. And I've migrate them over to a type B, but the majority of my patients are receiving uh, myoblock, this type B toxin, and for first-time injections, I usually start with myoblock, partly because I'm so familiar with it and comfortable and with the dosing, and I do have less experience using uh, type A's for this indication. Uh, everything else, I'm mostly using type A. I don't use a lot of myoblock for other indications.